Hello students. Today we are going to continue with topic 11 and we're going to be focusing on 11.2 which is movement. We're going to start looking at the skeletal framework and then we're going to take a look at joints. So the essential understanding for this particular section is bones and exoskeletons provide anchorage for muscles and act as levers. So pretty much all you have to know for this um, essential understanding is that um, there are different types of systems that help in movement. There is the skeletal system, which is made up of your bones, um, your muscular system, which is, of course is your muscles, and then your bones and your muscles act together to provide and help you with movement. And then the nervous system is the one that delivers the signals to the muscles which cause them to contract and act so you can move. So here you see a picture of all the different body systems involved in locomotion. Another um, part of what we're going to be looking at is how the joints, which are the connections between bones, help you also in movement. So in looking at the skeletal system, we know that the, the skeleton is a rigid framework and it's there to provide support and it's there to protect you or protect your body organs. So you already know that an endoskeleton is an internal type skeleton and that's what we have. And um, here you see that our endoskeleton is made up of our bones and then how these bones are connected in these joint, with, with joints. And then we see the exoskeleton, which is the, it's an external skeleton. And in this type of, of skeletons, these organic, organisms, um, they have their skeleton on the outside and it actually protects them like we see here with crustaceans and arachnids and insects. Now, what you need to remember is um, some of these connections to facilitate movement. So you need to know the difference between a ligament and a tendon. So a ligament is um, a type of connective tissue that is going to connect bones to other bones. And a tendon is what's going to connect bones to muscles. And that's pretty much it for this essential understanding. So moving on to joints, we are going to be looking at different types of joints. Um, but really what you're responsible for, if you look at the essential understanding here, is Understanding the um, understanding what a synovial joint is and how a synovial joint is going to allow for certain movements but not others. And then we're going to be looking at different types of synovial joints and you're going to see how some of them allow for a greater range of movement while others do not. And then knowing the structure of the synovial joint. And then if we move down here is um, just being able to annotate annotate a diagram of the human elbow, which is one example of a synovial joint, and in this case, um, it's a hinge joint. So um, you're not responsible for knowing all of the different types of synovial joints. You're just responsible for knowing that there are different types of synovial joints and that they all give a different range of mobility. So what is a synovial joint? Um, these are capsules that surround the articulating surfaces of two bones. So it's a capsule that surrounds where two bones connect. And these um, synovial joints are going to maintain structural stability. And they're also going to, going to allow for certain types of movements. So if you look at the three main components of a synovial joint, um, there's a joint capsule. This is what seals the joint space and provides stability by restricting the range of possible movements. Then there's the cartilage, which lines the bone surface to facilitate smoother movement and absorbing shock. So sometimes when this cartilage um, withers away, um, certain movements can become a little bit more painful. And then there's a synovial fluid, which provides oxygen and nutrition to this cartilage, as well as lubrication, which reduces friction. So here we see the six main types of synovial joints, and you're going to see them in order of mo mobility. 
So um, we're going to start with the joints with the least mobility, and then we're going to finish with the joints with the most mobility. So a plain joint right here, which is found in your tarsals, which is this, this bone structure right here, um, this is going to give you a very minimal type of mobility. So if you try to look at that top part of your foot, right, there's very little movement you can do with a plain joint. Uh, followed by a hinge joint, and a hinge joint would be, for example, your elbow. So if you think of the movement of your elbow, you can pretty much just move it up and down. Um, if you think of your ankle also, that's an example of a hinge joint that pretty much just moves up and down, right? And then we have the pivot joint, and um, this gives you a little bit more range in mobility, for example, between your vertebra. So think of how you move your neck. You can move your neck to the sides, and you can also move your neck up and down. Um, followed by condyloid joints. And um, an example of this one is found between the metacarpal and the phalanx. So this is pretty much your wrist. Okay, so you have a little bit more range of more motion in your wrist, right? You can um, turn your wrists around and move them up and down. And then we have the saddle joint. And in the saddle joint, for example, here's where you have um, movement between the metacarpal and the carpal. So it's the movement of your hand, and you have a little bit more mobility in your hand. And then finally, with the most mobility is the ball and socket joints right here. So you, if you think of your hip, um, between the mobility that you have between your hip and your femur, right? how you can rotate your legs up and down, back and forth, you can, you can do the twist, right? Um, also in your shoulder, you have a ball and socket um, joint, and that gives you even though there's other joints in your shoulder, um, this gives you a lot of mobility both in the shoulder and between the hip and the femur, which is the big bone here of your leg. Okay, So these are just different types of synovial joints. Now the one joint that you're going to be responsible for, um, for knowing an example is going to be the elbow joint or the joint of um, the hinge joint of your elbow. So let's take a look at this. Um, for this particular um, piece, you're going to need to be able to annotate a diagram of the human elbow. So this is a skill. Okay, so on a test um, or short answer question, I might give you the picture or the diagram of the human elbow, and you have to recognize all the different parts. So remember that any synovial joint is going to have the joint capsule with the synovial fluid and the cartilage, right? So remember that we said that the synovial joint was going to be that area here between two bones. So if we think of the elbow joint, we think of the main bone of the arm, right, which is the humerus, which is that big bone here. And then the humerus is going to connect to two smaller um, bones, on the, on the forearm, which is the radius and the ulna. Um, and then the synovial joint is right there in the middle. And in this particular case, it's the elbow joint, which is an example of a hinge joint. So um, if you think of your elbow, it's capable of angular movement in one direction, flexion and extension only. Small, small, small amount of rotation, um, but not too much, right? And then um, what are some of the muscles that surround these bones? So your biceps in the front, your triceps in the back, and um, that's pretty much the muscles that you're responsible for knowing. Um, if you look at this table here, it's just a recap of the different bones of the elbow, and then the different muscles of the arm, of the biceps and the triceps, and then the parts of the synovial joint the joint capsule, the synovial fluid, and the cartilage. And that's pretty much it for this section.